In Hollywood, there are a lot of ways to keep your audience engaged. Action, drama, explosions, a big reveal. But the best storytellers do it in ways that are much more subtle, like in this clip from Star Wars. Here we can see Obi-Wan Kenobi teaching Luke Skywalker about Jedi Knights, Darth Vader, the Force, and even the Dark Side. The Force? The Force is what gives the Jedi his power. Obi-Wan does a good job of teaching Luke here, but what he's really doing is teaching us, the audience. He's giving us the information we need in order to understand and follow the story. That way, in the very next scene, when we see Darth Vader using the dark side of the Force, we know what's happening and how it fits into the overall story. Because Obi-Wan just told us about it. In a way, we were primed to look for it without us even knowing. In the movies, this is referred to as exposition. It's what moves the story forward, and provides the audience the information they need in order to understand that story. And it's an incredibly useful tool for keeping the audience engaged. But it doesn't just apply to movies. Because it turns out, many of the concepts used to tell effective stories in Hollywood apply to business presentations as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use concepts like exposition to turn boring slides into presentations that are clear, engaging, and persuasive. You'll learn not only from the best presentation designers like McKinsey and BCG, but from world-renowned storytellers like George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and Christopher Nolan. Because whether you're giving a sales pitch, reporting on weekly financials, or launching a new iPhone, how you tell your story matters. And I'm gonna teach you how to do it right, coming up. Hey everyone, Paul here from Analyst Academy, where we provide PowerPoint, presentation design, and data visualization training to individuals and teams all around the world. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you check out our advanced courses over at theanalystacademy.com. Keeping your audience engaged during a story can be difficult, but keeping them engaged during a PowerPoint presentation is a whole other challenge entirely. That's because PowerPoint presentations are inherently boring. It might be fun and interesting to watch Frodo and his friends take a piece of jewelry up to Mount Mordor, but it's much less interesting to watch Steve from Finance tell you about next month's financial projections. So to learn how to make presentations less boring, I turned to Hollywood. I set out to watch some of the best movies I could think of to see what they do to keep audiences engaged. And what I learned is that there are some great techniques they use in movies that you can use in your presentation as well. The first of these techniques is a strong introduction. In a story, the introduction is critically important. It's meant to grab you, but also to establish the story, the characters, the theme, and especially the conflict of the story. In a musical, this might be done with the opening song, like in La La Land, where the music gives the audience a sense for the highs and lows of trying to make it in Hollywood. But you can also see it in more traditional movies, like The Social Network. In the opening scene, we learn all about the type of person Mark is. He's really smart, a little socially awkward, and according to the movie, driven by his desire to be accepted and cool. Final clubs. At finals clubs. We also learn about the world he lives in, who his closest friends are, and what kind of skills he has as a programmer. In a presentation, the introduction slide sets the stage for your audience, telling them what's to come and why they should care. In practice, there's a lot of different ways to structure this introduction slide, including the SCQA framework, which we covered in the last PowerPoint storytelling video. But at the heart of a good introduction is a complication, some problem or conflict that'll be resolved throughout the course of the presentation. For example, the first slide in this Accenture presentation on the future of energy is a slide about how the industry is experiencing disruption. With this complication introduced, the audience will naturally be looking for a resolution. So when they see slides like this, which explain how companies should respond, they intuitively understand why the slide matters in the context of the story. But you don't just want to provide this sort of guidance at the beginning. You want to do it throughout your presentation so your audience always stays engaged, so that they're primed and ready to receive new information. Which leads me to the second technique for keeping your audience engaged, voiceover. If you've ever given a live presentation, you've probably done this naturally. When showing a slide, you tell the audience what the slide is saying and why it's important. You tailor the content specific to them. And this is something you see in movies all the time, like in this scene from The White Tiger. Here the main character Balram explains how he's able to steal money from his employer. But then not just that, we learn how he feels about it. When I looked at that cash, I didn't feel guilt. I felt rage. In this scene from Shawshank Redemption, we get to learn how Andy escaped prison. But the narrator also gives us some nice symbolism to help us understand the broader meaning of Andy's escape. That's all it takes, really. Pressure and time. If you're going to present your slides live, it's important that your voiceover does two things. 
Number one, that it helps the audience understand the information in your slides. Just like in the clip from The White Tiger where he explains the process of getting extra money from his boss. And number two, it needs to help the audience understand the importance of that information. Like when Morgan Freeman's character tells us how geology is the study of pressure and time, which is a metaphor for Andy's time in prison. If I were presenting this McKinsey slide, for example, I might explain how the costs of on-premise infrastructure will continue to rise. But then I would also try to connect that message to the audience by explaining how they need to make the extra investment now if they want to save money in the long run. It might seem like an obvious takeaway, but emphasizing that takeaway with voiceover can help your audience stay engaged. But of course, in the business world, not all of your slides are going to be presented live. Which brings me to technique number three, structure. A good structure can help guide your audience through each section of a story, but also through the overall story itself. In a book, for example, each chapter is like a mini story with a beginning, middle, and end. But then the chapters combined together in the right way help form the overall story of the book. In a TV show, this is even more clear. Like in this scene from Friends, where we learn that Rachel's trying to get on a plane to London to go break up Ross's wedding. The tension in the scene continues to build as we wonder whether or not she'll be able to board the flight. Until finally, we learn that she doesn't have her passport and she'll have to go back home. The scene by itself is like a mini story, with an introduction, conflict, and resolution. But then the broader story is created when this scene is placed alongside the other scenes. Rachel is still in love with Ross. We wonder if she's going to do anything to stop the wedding. And eventually she makes it to the wedding, but then decides not to do anything when she sees how happy he is. Then of course, this episode feeds into the story of the season and the series where we follow Ross and Rachel's will they won't they relationship. And the audience is able to stay engaged because they can track how the story progresses and how each section fits into that story. The story of a presentation works in much the same way, with each individual slide contributing to the section and multiple sections working together to form a presentation and so on. The important part is to make sure your audience always understands where they are in the story so they can understand why that particular part of the story matters. In business presentations, a good way to do this is with the pyramid principle, which if you're not familiar, is just a method for communicating information where you start with the main idea first, then follow that up with supporting points. For example, my main point might be that sales are down. Then my supporting points could be that we have fewer customers and those customers are spending less per transaction. In this case, I would show this slide first, then these two next. But of course, I could add as many layers to this pyramid as I want, then arrange them to form my story. Laying it out this way makes it easy for the audience to understand where they are and how they got there, because one slide flows to the next in a way that's natural and easy to follow. Audiences are engaged when they know what's going on, but when they get lost, it's a lot more tempting to tune out. You might be thinking to yourself, yeah, but how can I keep my audience engaged when I give them the main message right up front? In a movie or a book, the main reveal doesn't come until the end, after the story has built some tension and developed the characters. And that might be true, but think about what your audience is really looking for. It's not some big reveal at the end of the presentation, and it's not even the answer to the question posed in the beginning of the presentation. What they're really looking for is the support and reasoning for that answer. In most cases, your audience is trying to make a decision of some kind, and they want to know that the decision they make is the correct one. Or sometimes they need to justify that decision to a boss, a client, or maybe their shareholders. Giving them a clear and well-structured story that they can follow is what they're most interested in. And it's how they're gonna stay engaged to the end of the presentation. By the way, I get asked at least once a week what tools I use to build slides. And what I always recommend is a tool called Ampler. It's basically an add-in for PowerPoint that helps you build slides quickly, but also lets you do a bunch of other stuff that you can't usually do in PowerPoint. For example, they have this cool storyboard feature that makes building out a full deck really simple. You can drag and drop your templates into the storyboard, edit individual titles, and, and even auto-generate an executive summary. But my absolute favorite tool is their chart builder. It's way better than using PowerPoint's native chart building functionality, and it's much cheaper than other third-party alternatives. You can build almost any chart you'd ever need, and you can do it incredibly fast. But it's not just charts and PowerPoint, they also have other tools for Word, Excel, and Outlook that all play together really nicely. And if your whole team has it installed, you can share a library of templates and make sure your brand is represented consistently across all your presentations. We've actually partnered with Ampler, so anyone who enrolls in one of our courses gets a free six month subscription. But if you're not enrolled in one of our courses and you still wanna check it out, I've included a link down below where you can get a free one month subscription. There's no credit card required and it's really easy to sign up, so make sure you check it out. 
Another practical way to keep your audience engaged is to give them structural cues to help them know where they are in the story. In a book, you would do this with chapter titles. These not only separate the story into manageable chunks, but they can help the audience assess where they are in the story. The titles of the chapters themselves can also be helpful. They give the audience an idea of what to expect in that chapter and to some extent what to look for. Once again, this primes them to receive critical information. You see this all the time in movies and TV shows as well. If we go back to the scene from Friends and rewind to the beginning, notice how we're first shown an establishing shot, something that tells us where the scene takes place, which in this case is the airport. You might have even noticed the music, which acts as a subtle cue for the audience. It tells us one scene is ending and another one is beginning. It helps us take stock of where we are in the story, so we can get ready for the next scene. In a presentation, you already have this naturally with different slides, but there's other things you can do to help the audience. The title of your presentation, for example, can set the overall tone, but then you can also have different sections, each with its own transition slide. It can also be helpful to add a tracker to tell the audience where they are in the presentation. And of course, the titles of the slides themselves also play a key role. These might feel repetitive for you, but that's because you've seen your presentation multiple times. For your audience, this is likely the first time they're seeing it. So any visual cues you can give them to help them understand where they are is gonna help them stay engaged. Another way to keep the audience engaged is through the content itself. In a movie, you might think of this as the dialogue words written in the script that are spoken between the characters. We saw this in the clip from Star Wars, where Obi-Wan explains the Force to Luke, but you can also see it in lots of other movies, like in this scene from Inception. Leonardo DiCaprio's character Cobb explains how the world works and where the characters fit in, once again, making sure the audience can follow along. And they fill it with their subconscious. But if you really want to tell a good story, it's not enough to help the audience understand the information you're giving them. You need to show them why it's important. In this scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Ferris, Sloan, and Cameron have just returned from a joyride in a vintage Ferrari that belongs to Cameron's dad, someone that he has a tense relationship with. At first, the dialogue is about trying to roll back the miles in the car so his dad doesn't notice. But then, frustrated that he can't do it, Cameron starts damaging the car. Here it's very clear what's happening, but it's the words from Cameron that add the emotional richness to the scene. I don't care, I really don't. I'm just tired of being afraid. It's not enough to just have good content in your presentation. You need to help the audience understand why that content matters for them. We don't just see Cameron kicking his dad's car. He explains to us what the Ferrari represents, his inability to stand up for himself. So then when the Ferrari falls out of the back of the garage, the audience gets to feel the turning point in the movie where Cameron becomes a new person, no longer weighed down by his fear of standing up to his dad. No, I'll take it. The way to do this in your presentation is to not just explain the what, but the why. Don't just show a chart with declining sales. Explain why declining sales matters for your company. In consulting, this was encapsulated with the question, what's the so what? In other words, why does this information matter for our client and how can we show that to them? Consider the difference between these two titles. Both titles explain the information on the slide, but only the title on the left connects the slide with the broader message of the presentation, which is that Wiz technology should enter the healthcare wearables market. When creating a slide, you always wanna ask yourself, how does what I'm adding right now contribute to the overall message of the slide? But then take it further. How does my slide contribute to the section? And how does the section contribute to the overall presentation? Being able to understand that yourself is really important. But helping the audience understand that through the content of your presentation is what's going to help them stay engaged. The final technique we're going to talk about is design. In a movie scene, it's not just what's said that matters, but what's shown. In the cinema world, this is referred to as mise-en-scene, which refers to anything within the frame of the camera that helps tell the story. In this scene from The Social Network, Mark is being reprimanded by Harvard's ad board. The scene starts by showing Mark's outfit, sandals with jeans and a sweatshirt which stand in contrast to the stuffy business attire of everyone else. The camera angles also put Mark as the focal point and are meant to highlight how much pressure is being put on him. Even these two people are uncomfortably close, and yet Mark is undeterred. Through its intentional but almost hidden design, this scene tells us what matters and why. Mark's a smart guy, but he's also a rebel and he's willing to break some rules. Returning again to the opening scene from La La Land, notice how the design informs the story of the ups and downs of trying to make it in Hollywood. 
The music is lighthearted and fun, it's a nice sunny day, and yet everyone is stuck in traffic, trying to make it to where else? Hollywood. The design of a scene is guided by what the director wants you to focus on. And likewise, the design of your presentation tells the audience what's important. Just like presentation cues can draw attention to the structure of a story, design can draw attention to the content. For example, on this McKinsey slide about cloud adoption, you can see what the author wants you to focus on. The title contains the main takeaway of the slide, which is why it's the biggest and boldest font on the screen. But then notice the colors. The important blocks are in noticeable hues of black and blue, while the less important blocks are in these subtle gray colors. There can be a lot of information on your slide, but the design of your slide tells the audience where to focus and what's most important. This is gonna help them understand the story, which is gonna help them stay engaged. All right, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you're interested in learning more, make sure you check out our courses over at theanalystacademy.com. And if you wanna try out Ampler, you can get a free six month subscription when you enroll in one of our advanced courses or you can get a one month subscription using the link below. Thanks again for watching.